Hi, I'm David from MK Dub, and welcome back to the final part, which is going to be using both pedals in a full mix. If you're into these videos, please go ahead and like the video, leave some comments, subscribe, share them to the various sites and forums or whatever. With that said, let's get into it. So I recently put up a track on YouTube, a synth sketch, synth jam, called This Is Love, where I challenged myself to, I basically got a busted mini Moog into my studio and it's gonna get fixed eventually, get serviced. But I challenged myself to go ahead and make a track with it even in its current state where the pitch oscillator, especially on oscillator three was really just glitchy and jumpy and all over the place. And so you can hear it there. And during the middle of finishing this track, I received the CXM 1978. And of course, to a man with a very, very expensive reverb pedal, everything in the, the track needed a reverb, right? I mean, so I went to town, I used it on a lot of the tracks and I, it sounded amazing. I've not really, you know, before I got the pedal, I was using plugins, Valhalla, Vintage Verb, or the Thought Filter Pro R, usually my go-tos. And, you know, they sounded pretty good. You know, I mean, I didn't have any complaints really. But then when I got the 78, it just kind of took it to a different level where I was starting to feel the, the, the effects was, you know, the reverb was making me feel something. I don't know what exactly, but it's just, you know, like, you're just like, oh man, that sounds awesome. And so, yeah, I thought a good test for, for determining which one of these pedals is going to work better for me, since that, this track is so fresh in my mind, was to go ahead and turn off all the reverbs that the 1978 was using here, and to go ahead and turn on and redo them all with the golden and see how that sounded. So on bus three and four, I had this, I call it sax stand and no verb. Let's hear what it sounds like. We'll just solo it. And here it is right here. <laughs> yeah, so I originally had planned for my saxophone to play that part. And this one sounds like dry. And what I really liked about the 78 was that it added the ambience without kind of getting in the way or being too noticeable. So like when I muted it there, it was like, I had to listen to make sure that I actually had done anything. And so let's go ahead and we're gonna use the, the UAFX Golden on this one. Once I hit record on that, whoa, there we go. <laughs> um, so on this one, I want to kind of like a short, like barely noticeable. Let's, let's go with the plate first. So there's kind of like a nice little halo effect there. how dry it is when you, when you get to the end of the notes there. Let's try plate C. Let's try plate A. Let's go ahead and try the spring here. So, Yeah, so there's a little subtle, subtle ring there. Okay, let's see how it sounds like in the context of the track. It's pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and record that. That way I can combine it later. Turn off the loop. Turn off the loop, man. Okay, we'll save that. Let's move on to the next track here. 
First thing we're gonna do is start with my saxophone. I really enjoyed what the 78 did in my saxophone, so let's see what UAFX Golden can do. Let's try B. Or is that C now? We're on C. Sounds pretty good. Let's try against A. I kind of like A. I can't really explain why. I just like the kind of the way my sax sounds in the reverb tails better on A. I don't know if that, chance, that difference is going to translate when uh, you're listening to it on YouTube, but I uh, that's the one I'm rolling with. So I also don't want to spend too long remixing a song that I've already released. <laughs> so uh, UFX FX is going to get shortchanged a little bit in that regard. So we're going to go to the piano. Let's try B. I kind of like B. Let's get some more modulation. Let's try C. So, yeah, I think I liked be the best out of the halls. Let's try the... I kind of like that one too, but we can try the other ones. Try C there. I'm going to go to the spring. I really do enjoy the spring reverb on this UAFX. And I know I said it was a loser leaves town, loser shave their head, death match. But I've, all, I've been thinking about buying a spring reverb, like a Vermona spring reverb unit or the Retroverb or Endless Summer or whatever. And if I was going to do that, and I really enjoy the spring reverb on this one, then why not just keep this pedal, right? So it's something I got to think about. Well, let's finish our testing first. I just talked over that. I really do like that spring reverb. Let's try it B. Whoa, that's really interesting on that modulation there. Let's see how it sounds in context. That was kind of cool. It just kind of did something, and you know, its own thing. It did its own thing there. Let's let's hear it in context again. Yeah. Okay. That spring bee is the winner. Let's print it, move on. So after that, we got the chords here. And let's hear what it sounds like. Chords sound like. Uh, I don't know if I'm feeling the spring on these chords here. Let's go to the plate.
do a solo first because I'm I that way I don't have to try to pick out that reverb. Okay, that's That's quite a bit of ambience is adding. Let's try um, C. Maybe reduce the bass down a little bit. There's a bass kind of going at the same time. Maybe we'll turn off the, the high pass filters on this. Let's go to B. I think I like plate B best so far. Let's go on and hit all. Let's go B. I have to say, working with the golden, because there's three algos, and each algo has three different options. It feels more like preset surfing than on the Sign of the Eight, which kind of feels more like your sound designer sculpting it because it has the the faders and not quite the same options where uh, you're kind of switching algos within algos. Let's try it again. I think I like this one the best so far. It sounds the most natural, kind of. Let's go compare it to plate B. Let's hear it in context. See? Yeah, see, in context, I don't know how I'm feeling about that piano melody, Spring Reverb. It's sounding a little, yeah, you know. Um, but I don't know if I really want to go back and revisit it. I think I'm going to go with Hall C on this one. And let's just go ahead and print it. And yeah, okay, so let's do the strings now. Let's hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and solo this. Let's try Hall B. Let's try Hall A. Let's try Plate.
I don't know if I'm filling any, any of those plates for this track. Let's try the spring here. Yeah, that might be too much, that spring. Let's go back to the hall. I think B was the one I was feeling the most. Let's do it in context. Let's turn down some of this modulation. Let's go ahead and record. <sighs> okay, now that we've got the strings all situated, we've got everything we needed. Let's go ahead and compare the, the two reverbs on each thing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate them and kind of group them together by pedal. And then that way I can mute back and forth and decide which one I like better as a cohesive mix. And I'm just going to solo the sax so I can just get the levels right and hear the So that's what that, so let's hear the UA, the 1978 one. Here's, here it is dry. <laughs> you can see it makes a, it makes a sound a big difference there. So here was the original, here's what it sounded like originally. It gets a lot. The 78 really added a lot there. Especially on the strings there. Wow. It's a pretty massive difference there. Let's, let's go ahead and listen to it on the UAFX side. Start from here where you can have the piano at the same time with the reverb. Here from here and compare the two. 
Here's the CXM. Let's go back to this UFC FXX. a good choice with that piano sound with uh with that spring reverb there it kind of here's the UFX the next one the six up's a little bit brighter let's switch over I mean, for me, I think the, the clear winner is Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that really deep dive comparison. And after all that, I'm back with my verdict. It was always a fixed fight. There was ever only ever going to be one winner in this fight. And that was the CXM 1978, because frankly, I fell in love with it, right? Like it's so hands-on. And it just feels like another instrument, not more than just a pedal. It was like a sound design kind of creativity machine. And there really wasn't any way I was ever going to give that up, if I'm honest. Uh, but, you know, I had to check to make sure that the sound quality was really going to be hard to imagine another pedal blowing away the CXM based on sound. And if I'm also being fully honest, just um, based on pure sonics, pure sound, and depending on what you want out of a reverb pedal, if somebody was to say that the UAFX Golden reverberator sounded better than the 6M 1978, they're, probably, they're about even, right? So the sound, I'm, I'm not basing my decision based on sound only, right? I'm based, uh, I'm a musician, an artist, and so I make music, and part of that is about emotion and feelings and aesthetics and how that all kind of infuses into what you're putting into your art and then what you're putting out. Right, and the CXM, I feel like, makes me feel something, and that's the most important thing. It was supposed to be a loser leaves town shootout, and the loser leaving town is not the CXM 1978, and it's also not the Golden Reverberator. They're both staying, right? There's no way in hell that I'm letting the, the UAFX go and get out of here either. The Spring Reverb just by itself is amazing, and the main reason for me to keep it, even if I didn't want the other two algos, which are also really great, plus the bonus algos. So what's Who's Leaving Town? The Boss Reverb RV500, left town already, it's already gone. The, I still need to raise some funds, so the Moog, the Moogerfoger MF103, it's out of here, it's gone, take a hike, buddy. Uh, it was nice knowing you. And yeah, so that's, those are the pedals that are making way. Um, you know, I was so impressed with the Golden that not only did I keep the Golden, even though I didn't want to have two high-end reverb pedals, but I also wound up picking up the Starlight Echo Station and the Astra. Now, I'm showing you the boxes because they're actually on my reverb pedal board, or they're on my pedal board. They're not, so I, and I didn't want to take them off. They're, on my, they're being used. So I'm just showing you the boxes, and I got a used Apollo. That's how impressed I was with the sound quality on the Universal Audio. I mean, I've been in this music game for close to two decades now, 20 years. My first 7-inch single came out in 2003, I want to say. Universal Audio has been there the whole time, right? And I never believed the hype. I was kind of like, uh, first off, I am not a Mac person. I don't like Apple. I don't like the way they don't give me any options. They don't let me do what I want to do. And so I prefer not to use their stuff. And the uh, Universal Audio platform has always been kind of tied to Mac. But secondly, you know, I can always believe the whole hardware dongle kind of, you know, knock against Universal Audio. And I just prefer to have the flexibility of native plugins. So... The Universal, the UAFX Golden Reverberator psh, blew my mind, changed all that, convinced me that maybe the hype was real on these plugins, the hype was real on this coding, the hype is real on these shark chips, whatever the hell it is, the, the, the magic they're cooking up. 
I went ahead and got these other two pedals. They sound amazing. They sound amazing on on all my synthesizers. When I got this Apollo Twin, I popped on a couple plugins. I was like, holy crap, what have I been wasting these <laughs> the last decade of my life messing around with these plugins, spending, you know, hours and hours trying to get the sound right, and you pop on a UA plugin, a UAD plugin, and it's like right within like two minutes, and it sounds great, and you just move on, right? Like, what the f have I been doing with my life? <laughs> That's how I feel about the Universal Audio. Long story short, there are no winners or losers. There's just some really quality product here, right? I hope you've enjoyed the shootout.